So today on this introductory course to Final Cut Pro version 10.3, um, we're just going to look at adding text to our videos. So over here, we have a project that we were working on in the previous video. So I'm just going to show you how to begin adding text to the video. So your text are up here. We have our, um, our folders, our libraries, and it's the one, not this symbol here, the one next to it with the T. So if you click here, that's our titles and our generators. Generators are our backgrounds, our titles are our text. So we're going to begin looking at how we can add these onto our onto our videos. First of all, any of the ones here that have a black background that aren't black, it's essentially nothingness, it's like our gap media. Um, so they can be placed on the line above the video and you'll see the images beneath them. So if I take this basic 3D one for example, drag it and place it on the line above my video, you'll see that the uh, the words appear above the above the image. Um, if you were to place them on the timeline alongside the video, which you absolutely can do, actually sorry I've got my wrong back to letter again, you'll see that it's it's just appears to be on a on a pure black background, but that's only because there's nothing underneath it. Any of these titles which have a sort of coloured uh, background of some kind, there's a silver one there, there's a white one here, these ones um, have a background. So if I click that and drag it and place it above the clip, you can't see the clip that exists underneath, it cuts to it. Um, but these can be disabled. So if you click on the clip, any of the clips really that have um, a background enabled in them, when you go up to your inspector, it's in the T function. This one here has the option of show backgrounds. If you deselect it, then you've got the text appearing over the video, the same as the other ones. If I pick another example, let's take this one here and pop it here. Um, the same function is still here, but there's a number of additional options. Each each um, text portion is going to have, depending on how much animation has been applied, depending on what sort of features um, are enabled for that particular portion of text, it's going to have different functions. Um, so it's not a one size fits all for these um, particular um, functions. So let's just delete that there for a moment. So now we have, we want to place our text um, onto our timeline and obviously we want it to, to pick something that's going to work. So we want a nice kind of title for this one. So maybe I'll just pick this one that's got a nice kind of gentle blur in here to begin with. So it's going to gently blur into the video with our sound. Now I'm going to temporarily disable this, this audio. You can temporarily disable any clip, clip or uh, whether it's visual or audio, by using the letter V on your keyboard. The letter V just temporarily disables this, it's like it's not there. If you were to do an export, it would still, it wouldn't export like it was, it's like it completely doesn't exist. And you can re-enable that by hitting V again. I'm just going to disable that so we can focus on the visuals without playing the, uh, the sound each time. So the first thing to note then is that we want the um, the title. It can be placed anywhere you want. A lot of the adjustments you can make is actually on the screen itself. So I'm, now I've got my text, I'm going to just close this portion so we can see it a bit more clearly. So you can actually click on the text itself on the screen and you can use that to drag it wherever you want it to be. So I don't want it to be um, in the middle of the space. As I can drag as well, you can kind of see these guidelines start to appear. When I'm in here, it's kind of where it wants to be. When I, when I align horizontally, it tells me where I am. This is aligned with the center of the word. This is a, uh, horizontally aligned with the base of the word. This is horizontally aligned with the top of the word. Similarly, when I get to the vertical axis, I am aligned vertically here with the end of the word, with the beginning of the word, base, side, or with the center. And that's the full center right there. So I'm going to decide, I want it to be maybe, yeah, we can kind of dive here for the moment. It's our lower thirds, but I want it to be yes, so it's still going to be our title option. So I need to give this, um, I need to be able to type in. So you double click on the word itself and you can actually type straight onto the screen. So I'm just going to say um, this particular um, the piece of music is called Iron, so I'm going to call it Iron. And it's a solo performance, so I'm going to call it Iron Solo. And now I've typed in the word. I might say I want to place it somewhere slightly different because I want it to be exactly there. So let's just do a little play of that. It's just blurs in there. It might even come in slightly soon, so let me just have a little moment of black first of all. Pull it over a little bit. There you go. And I might want it to fade out before the next clip, so let's drag that in a little bit and see if that goes. So it's going to blur out there. 
Maybe we can slightly there. Okay, so we can type in the text directly onto our screen. So now that we've got text typed on our screen, up here we have a lot of different options that are largely very similar to Word. So you can either highlight it here on the screen, select in here, or you can select it up here now that we have text that is written and printed. Um, so in the first option here, this is titled, this has got uh, different types of options. It's, this is more like how it's animated. So your build in and your build out, that are those are related to um, whether or not it animates in and out, and it's very, very dependent on uh, the function of that particular piece of text. And different ones have different ones. Some spin around, spin around, <laughs> around the screen. Some kind of fade in. Some kind of uh, move to the side. So they all have different functions. The build in is if whether or not it kind of cuts straight in, or whether it uses its inbuilt animation. So if I take out the build in, you see it just pops onto the screen. If I bring the build in back in then it blurs softly into the screen. And that's the same with the exit. So it can either cut out or it can build out. If I want it to cut out, maybe see in time with this part, I might take the build out and then it's just going to cut as the clip cuts. Yeah, so that's kind of how your plan Z to undo everything. That's um, sort of how those work. And you have some font adjustments and size and things here, but we're going to work with that in more detail actually in the, the paragraph section. You can also do things like change the color, Things like the, uh, these these are all very different depending on the font, so you do just kind of have to have a, a little bit of a play with them by character, by word or line. So that's whether the whole line fades in or whether each letter fades in one by one, whether it fades in forward, sideways, backwards, they all have slightly different effects. So let's just move over to the paragraph. So from here, you can go down to sort of some of the basic adjustments. Now all of these menus here, so you've got the option, like again, unless you're hovering over something, over the screen sometimes you don't see it. So it's like there's nothing there until you bring the mouse up to it and you have the option to hide. So if I hide that, and hide that, you can see you've got all these different options here within our text and all of these, every single one of them, has a sub-menu that you can utilize in some capacity. So we'll hide them for the moment, but we're gonna go into this. So I want my basic ones to be shown. And by default, the basic ones are shown because they're the ones that are used in the So iron solo is highlighted. So here, this is where you can adjust the font. So if you click here, you get a nice drop down menu full of fonts, depending on what you happen to have in your um, in your Word in your computer. Now, I don't know if you can see this as well, but on the screen at the moment, the last co couple of letters are slightly blurred. Now that's, got in, that's in relation to where my playhead is. And this can be quite important, especially if you have um, titles which have different words placed at different points on the screen. So if I was to make my font adjustment here, you might find that everything looks blurry. So you need to make sure whatever you're adjusting, whether that's the font, whether that's what's written, it has to be adjusted at the point where it becomes where it becomes clear and where it becomes readable and important there. So I want it to be here. Let's go back to that so we're not getting that blur at the end of that letter. So you've got some quite dramatic ones. Depending on the font, so if you have some nice kind of like simple ones, things like you know, ones you all know, things like called Helvetica, um, these will have a lot of options in the sub menu, which is regular. So you've got things like light, oblique, various options here. Some of the more ornate options, things like these ones, are only going to have regular because they're they're designed to be quite um, quite decorative. So there's not going to be too many options for them. So let's stick with that one. Why not? It's quite an interesting one. So now we've got the font, and we've got whether it's you know, just one is regular. You can then adjust the size. You can do that just by doing this one here or actually by hit, typing in a particular number. You can also use a scroller up and down within the numbers themselves, you want to be quite specific. So I don't know why, let's go for about 110. So it's kind of bold enough. But now we've increased the size, we need to adjust where it is again, because the, the location has sort of shifted a little bit. Um, now we have that, you've got also your alignment. So the alignment actually is in relation to this dot here. So you can see here it's centered. It's centered around this dot that we have when we start making our adjustments. So if we go here, over to our left aligned, it's left aligned. So that's here centered and here right aligned. So you can make your kind of adjustments in relation to that. So if I had that right aligned, actually, I think if I adjust the size, yeah, it stays where it is. So if you need to make your alignment particular to this point, you could choose your point where the words are going to come in, and then it's not going to like that can just adjust on one individual word. So on the highlighted this portion, so let's highlight the whole thing again. Um, so now it's going to make that adjustment but keep the, the placement. 
Um, vertical adjustment here, I don't worry too much about those ones. It's kind of, it depends if it's more, um, if there's more writing involved in each portion. The line spacing, now that's if you have these words on different lines. So I'll just scroll back up again. The computer's just a moment to freeze. So if I take this here, I'll do it this here, I'll make it a little bit easier. Drag this up and hit return. So now I've got two lines. If I highlight these, my line spacing is how far apart the lines are. And that can be relevant depending on if you have like paragraphs because you can paste whole loads of kind of titles and credits and all kinds of things and sometimes when you change the size of those as well the uh, the alignment between the words starts to pull apart or get closer together so that can become quite important um, so I'm going to undo all of that because I just want to keep it on a single line the tracking is how far apart the letters are so if I pull the tracking the letters get further apart so that's quite real. nice with his body aligns with the centre of the words let's keep that why for a new creative trust the baseline is where, so we have again our kind of little um, alignment point here, and this is the baseline. This just determines where the words are in relation to that. So as you're moving it around, it's just another sort of guideline that you have there. Now this is quite a fun one, um, all caps possibly won't appear in this font. So let me just change back to my um, briefly. Um, so I've got everything in lowercase. This option here for all capitals will turn everything into capital letters. So if I tick that, everything is now in capitals. What you can see is that the ones that were previously capitals are now slightly bigger capitals. So you've got a slightly different look. So it doesn't, um, so it still kind of keeps that capital lowercase uh, relationship, but it's um, placed everything now in capitals. So it's a nice kind of quick option sometimes if you just want to see what something looks like in capitals or not. And it can be a nice, uh, nice decorative option. So I'm going to put that back to previous font because that was quite fun the way it was. Um, and down here, yeah, are all caps. All caps size. So that's actually, I think, where you can make that make that adjustment there. So we have all caps ticked. And then we haven't. We can kind of adjust how much that is in relation to those. So you can actually adjust how small or how large. I think that one, yeah, 100% puts them all back into relationship to where they work. But that nice, it's a, it's a nice uh, little feature there. It's going to have that relationship. Um, Let's skip through D-Text for a moment because that's a little bit more complex one. It's very similar to face, but it gives face different um, dimensions. So the face is just the kind of look, so it's the colour, it's also the texture, and um, I think also the opacity of the letters themselves. So if I click on show, let's get a little submenu here. Fill with, it's in colour, gradient, texture. So let's just stick with colour for the moment, and we want a particular colour. So right now they're white. Of course, we always have a drop down menu, so you can really choose whatever color you really want. Um, so let's have a look at one of these blues, see if we can match it up with this blue that we have here. So you can pick a particular color like this. Alternatively, you can double click on the color box itself, which will open up another sub menu. This one's particularly handy for its dropper function. If I click on the dropper, this allows me to choose particular pixels that are present on the screen. So I'm actually going to choose a pixel from here that I like. Let's pick one of these. Might be a tiny bit dark, but it's quite nice. And then once you pick that, you can make an adjustment to it. So maybe make it a little brighter. Just a little. I think that's a tiny bit too purple, so let's choose another one. Let's maybe say maybe it just is purple. Let's go with that one. Get a little brighter. Yeah, that's quite a quite a purple. So now you've got this this colour has now appeared. Can we get more on the blue side? And um, I'm going to drag this colour, click it, drag it, pull it with me, and drop it on top of this box. And now my text is matched up with the colour that I've selected in the picker. It can be really useful for doing things like matching up your text with maybe logos you've been given, or things like that that you know you want it to match, or to match the colour of a scene, you want it maybe to match a costume that someone's wearing, or the colour of someone's hair, this type of thing. The, op the opacity is um, how see-through that is. Now this is on, on black, so you won't see that too well, but um, if you bring down the opacity, it tends to soften things a little bit. It also might darken them a little bit, um, because this particular font, um, so it, there's a lot of black in the background, so if you kind of bring it. This also has a glow attached to it though, so that's why this yellow starts to appear, it's because there's a glow function that's built into part of the text. So you might bring it down just a tiny bit just to soften it, and let's just play and see how that's starting to look. Lots between the words. There we go. So we're starting to kind of create. This particular font has a bit of an outline as part of its glow. Um, so that's just sort of part of the animation. It's kind of hard to, to get rid of that. 
If, however, the face was changed to 3D, there's a whole load of different functions start to come into play. The face almost becomes a little bit kind of redundant, it sort of disappears. And the face is now replaced with facets and dimensions. Um, so you've got all these options and now, <laughs> now starting to appear. So your lighting, because it's 3D, you can decide like where the light is in relation. So you might match it up, so like, for example, standard medium left above. The light is coming from Jason and the diagonal left. So you might match up the lighting on, on the writing to the, where the lighting is um, on the text, for example. You can also change the, the, um, the material for the grunge. So it might turn into some sort of different kind of grungy material. You might match it up even to things like the wood that you have. It's going to change it totally. So that might match up now with the, the wood that you have on the, um, the handle as opposed to the, the blue sort of tape on the rope. So you have all these different options. With, with 3D it becomes much, much more complicated and also more creative and more interesting. So you can have a play with those if you self shadows, intensity, you can kind of soften them a little bit, get green depth placement, you can, you, can, you can add things like scratches and different things to, to these options, add layer, distress, scratches, stains, dirt, so you can make it kind of slightly scratchy so it's, it's not kind of like a solid wood. Um, distress, scratches, 100%. So you have all of these, let's, let's full screen that, see how that works. You have space bar, you can see sort of the full dimensions. It looks a little funny with this particular font, but we'll work with that anyway. Double click this to bring that back in and reactivate all of these options. I can lie that one away for a moment. Um, so, yeah, so there's a lot of options available to you for your text. And again, things like your opacity, you can kind of bring that down if you want it to be slightly more see through. Things like your transform, your crop, these are all things we're going to go into in a later video. They can all be altered as well. And your information still is just your kind of metadata, the information, the length, the duration, and all that kind of stuff in the rules. So that's your sort of basic text. Now for with most of these, again, there's loads and loads of different options, and you do just sort of have to have a play with it. Um, some of the more built-in animated ones um, are going to take a bit more time. What's most important, I think, about the animated ones is that wherever you're making an adjustment, let's find one... This is a good one. Let me bring this one in. So this one you can see, um, it has a variety. The words appear in different places, and that becomes important. I'll drag that in so I can really get that. That becomes important because if you want to make an adjustment to the word, you have to make sure that your playhead is at the point where those words start to appear. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to make any adjustments to them. So I can only type in that information when it's here. So I have to make sure that I double click there so I can actually see where that adjustment is happening and also for example if you want to choose where that word happens to appear on the screen like maybe I don't want it kind of quite in the space or something like that you have to find the point where it's at the moment where you um sorry, a little bit further. you have to make sure that it's at the peak point and really click so you're going to see it come into play this time. Let's just play that briefly. So I can play it a tiny bit slow. Yeah. So if you want to make an adjustment to the text to type them or to move them, you have to make sure that the playhead is adjusted to that point. Um, so yes, yeah, so you've got things like also within your titles. Actually, just one more small thing up here. Clicking down, you've got a few subheadings, so you don't have to scroll through them all. If you know you want credits, you know you want kind of lower thirds, those types of things. Lower thirds are good for descriptors, they're good for interviews, they're good for something which has, you know, maybe interviewing different people or has different chapters, different parts to a piece, you can use those for that. Credits, you have your standard scrolling credits, but to be honest, you can use any of your sort of standard build-in, build-out with credits. You might just have a whole page that fades in and out of the screen kind of bit by bit. Um, a lot of these, yeah, bumpers, openers, they're kind of good for um, sort of bold openings to things and then we've got our 3D cinematic you can set up how play with those. Again, these titles and generators, they don't have to have the backgrounds there, which can be quite fun but um, any of these that have a background you can disable the background usually up here, but you can still function without that if need be. So, that is our text for today um, 
so thank you very much for watching.